Hey guys, Joshua here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Aftershock Apex 17. It's actually been a while since I've actually touched a 17 inch laptop, and before this review even starts, I have to say I have been thoroughly impressed with this machine, save for some points, which as the video goes on, you'll see what I'm talking about. For its design, it's a brushed metal black cover with the silver Aftershock logo on the back. Looks really nice, but I have to warn you that it is a fingerprint magnet. The Apex 17 is 39cm by 26cm and at its thickest point, it is 3.5cm in thickness. So for a 17 inch laptop, its size is pretty small comparatively. Pair that with the fact that this weighs in at only 2.5kg and you have a sleek beast of a machine right here. It basically measures and weighs in at almost the same dimensions and weight of other 15 inch laptops. So just think about that. On one side, you're getting two USB 3.0 ports and a card reader. On the other side, your LAN port, a USB 2.0 port and a headphone and mic port. On the back of the laptop, there are two mini display ports, a single HDMI port, USB-C port and the power port. Definitely not lacking in any way. The screen is a 17.3 inch full HD display, 1920 by 1080 and runs at 144Hz, so perfect for gamers on the go. Colors are great on this, but if you are a professional video or photo editor, bear in mind that the display is at 72% NTSC. Don't get me wrong, this is still very good for gaming, watching movies and all your everyday tasks as long as you don't need it for professional use. This screen is amazing, viewing angles are also very good. You can easily have 4-5 to five people watching this screen from different angles and they still get a very nice image. One of the most impressive things about this laptop is the thin bezels on this. Gaming, movies, anything you can think of, using this screen is just pure bliss. There's really nothing like it and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is one of the first, if not the first 17 inch thin bezel 144Hz display on a laptop. For the keyboard, this is personally to me one of the best implementations of a mechanical keyboard in a thin gaming laptop if you like using brown switches because you can't change the switches. They are set in stone and are only in brown tactile mechanical switches. The keys are spaced very very nicely and I had no problems getting used to typing on this. As you heard, they are as quiet as any normal keyboard with brown switches. The keys in this Apex 17 feel, I would say, feel actually the closest to a proper full-size mechanical keyboard so if you like brown mechanical switches, you'll love this keyboard. There's literally zero flex on the keyboard and also on the entire chassis for that matter. The entire laptop is just very solid and definitely feels very premium. Each key is also individually backlit and you can even go into the control center to adjust the colors and effects to your own preferences very easily. It is fully customizable. The trackpad is a little wider than ones that I'm used to seeing on other laptops but it's still very easy to use, accurate and has no delays so no complaints there from me. There's also a very neat little function which is very easy to lock your trackpad if you're using a mouse and don't want to accidentally brush against it. You literally just double tap on the side and if the light comes on it means your trackpad is locked and nothing will make it move and when the light is off it means that you are able to use the trackpad as per normal. The Apex 17 has some amazing sounding speakers. They are powered by the Sound Blaster Cinema 5 and when you sit in front of the laptop, the sound is crisp and clear and because there are two built-in speakers and a subwoofer, you can actually feel the bass very very well. Legit, if you're not a fan of using headphones or earphones, these are some great sounding speakers for you. The webcam is decent enough, it's pretty much what you expect from almost any laptop in the market and yeah, the mic is actually quite good so you can actually use this to talk to your teammates if you don't have a built-in mic on your headset, something like that and yeah, this would definitely work okay. Moving on to the internals, the current configuration I have here has an 8th gen Intel Core i7-8750H 6-core processor, a GTX 1066 GB graphics card, 16GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage. 
Now, one of the downsides of the Apex 17 is that there is little less configuration options than usual. You can't change the CPU, GPU, or keyboard, so you will be stuck with what it comes with, but you can up the RAM to a max of 32 GB, get extra storage space for the SSD, or even add a HDD in. And now moving on to the benchmark test. In Cinebench, your OpenGL score is going to be 103.67 FPS, while the CPU score is going to be 1218CB. In 3 d Mark Time Spy, your score is 3865, with the graphics score scoring 3607 and the CPU score at 6508. In PC Mark 10, your overall score is 5001, Essentials at 8184, Productivity score 7125, with digital content creation being 5,824. On full load for about an hour, the GPU temps are able to be maintained at around 71 degrees Celsius to 72 degrees Celsius, which is actually pretty good, so you won't have to worry too much about overheating, and the fans at the same time are also not that loud. Running Prime 95 at about half an hour plus, as you can see, load is on 100% and the temperatures peak at about 84 degrees Celsius and generally it will sit around the 82 degrees Celsius mark. With everything on high in PUBG, you're easily getting above 70 FPS. At times when stuff is rendering in the background or foreground, you'll see it dip a little bit below 70, but generally in PUBG on high, you'll be getting more than 70 FPS, so that feels super playable. And if you just change everything to ultra, Line. Even in Ultra, if you don't mind playing at say about actually 60 FPS or so, it's still amazing. So as you can see, it's able to maintain above 60 FPS, so just as good. In Fortnite, with everything on Epic, you're easily getting above 80 FPS, so there's literally no problems at all playing this game. And yeah, as you can see, I'm running around, everything's rendering in the background and it drops to just about 70 FPS and this is on epic settings you have to be reminded even when you build things you can see the FPS only drops to about 72, 73 which is still really very good as you can see everything performed really well for its specs and even the fan noise when on idle is actually pretty much silent so if you're just surfing the web watching YouTube etc it has very very silent performance when gaming, letting the fans auto-adjust themselves, it is also at an acceptable noise level where if you're wearing a pair of headphones or even having some game sounds playing through the speakers, you'll barely notice it. Only when you choose to put the fans into turbo mode, that's when the noise gets a little louder. It's about 10 decibels louder and you definitely need headphones to drown out the fan noise if you're going to set it to turbo. Unfortunately, battery life is not the greatest on this. With casual use, I got about 3.5 hours to 4 hours and if you're gaming, it'll last only about 1.5 to 2 hours depending on how hard you push it. Bring the power brick around everywhere you go. Overall, this laptop configuration that I have costs about 2500 SGD and to me, for a 17-inch laptop with a beautiful display plus 144Hz screen, a mechanical keyboard and this comparatively lightweight body, also, it is at a super competitive price. There really is nothing like it in the market right now. Definitely recommend it if you're looking to play games on the go and you're like me, think that a 15 inch screen size is a bit too small. You're going to love the Apex 17. That's it for the video. Leave me a comment if this would be on your list of laptops to buy. Like and subscribe for more tech and gaming videos. Hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos come up and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao!